Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I am doing my review of This Tender Land by William Kent Kruger. I don't know why I didn't hold up the book when I have it. William Kent Kruger, This Tender Land. <laughs> don't mind me, I have a burn on my neck from a hair curler, so don't mind that. <laughs> this Tender Land is about these four orphaned children who are starting out our story in a school for lost Native American children, those who have lost their parents. And these two white children end up in this school because they become orphaned and somehow know the owner of this school. And so they're ro roped into this school. Something terrible happens with one of these characters and therefore launches these four characters on a kind of journey through the American Midwest during the time of the Great Depression. That pretty much is the summary of this book. I'm going to start off by saying this is very much a journey of a book. So we're following our characters on what feels like an odyssey, right? It's a journey of not only like a physical journey, but a spiritual journey where our characters are literally coming of age during this journey and learning who they are. And so they're meeting these characters along the way that kind of bring out these different sides of themselves that they didn't even know that they had, um, all while trying to maintain their friendship with the other characters. Um, and it goes so much further than these characters being friends. It's like they're a family. So it's kind of loving them uncondi unconditionally, even with their flaws on full display. So I would say that right off the bat, this does read very slow and atmospheric. So right off the bat, if you're not a fan of slow, but kind of deep character driven novels, this is not the book for you. This is not a plot driven novel by any means. We are 100% following characters as our characters come into themselves. I had notes on this somewhere. Let me go get those. Hey, I'm back. So on the topic of characters, these characters in this novel, we follow four main characters and then meet a variety of side characters kind of throughout their journey. And every single one of those characters was excellently written. I loved all of them, even the ones that you're really not supposed to like. I still loved because they're human, right? It's it's those humans that show flaws and weaknesses, even if they're strong and, and try to appear strong. And I, I loved, loved these characters. The side characters are written just as well as the main characters, which is so rare to find in novels nowadays. I haven't written a no or I haven't read a novel where I've loved the side characters just as much as the main characters in a very long time. So Kruger does an incredible job with these characters in this novel. That alone is why I would recommend this book to those who love character-driven novels. It prevalent themes in this book include themes of obviously friendship and family, but also religion. And there's really interesting takes on religion in this book. Um, and as someone who's not very religious myself, I really appreciated how Kruger commented on religion in this book and kind of showed different characters' perspectives on religion, especially during the time of the Great Depression in America, where people so desperately needed something to believe in because so much tragedy was all around them. So I really enjoyed the themes of religion, um, even as someone who I wouldn't describe myself as very religious. 
The other thing I thought was pretty interesting that was unexpected was the slight paranormal elements in this. And I'm not talking about paranormal like ghosts or <laughs> vampires or whatever. I'm talking about paranormal in human characters, um, kind of powers, if you will. And I don't want to say anything else about it because I don't want to give anything away. Um, but I by no means am saying this is a paranormal book at all. This is 100% just adult contemporary drama. Um, very much not a paranormal read. But there are these slight, slight elements that kind of enhance the themes of religion that I really, really enjoyed. And I liked what the author was trying to say with them. Um, and it's kind of up to you as the reader to determine whether or not you believe um, one way or the other. And I'm not going to say anything else um, regarding that particular topic because I don't want to give anything away. If you've read this book and you know what I'm talking about, leave a comment down below on what you personally think it, it means. Um, and make sure to mark your comment with spoiler just to make sure that we're not spoiling it for anyone else. Overall, I would rate this book a four out of five stars. I really really enjoyed my time reading this Tenderland and I would recommend it for anyone like I said before who loves a good character driven novel um, particularly those who enjoyed books like Where the Crawdads Sing um, which is what it was originally compared to um, in its kind of blurb uh, selling the book which is what attracted me to it in the first place I would agree with that um, recommendation that if you enjoyed Where the Crawdads Sing, that's a very character driven novel. So this is similar to that in that regard. But also for fans of A Gentleman in Moscow, which is very much character driven and atmospheric in a slow burn, um, this Tenderland you would also probably like, uh, as well as fans of The Great Alone by Kristen Hanna. If you liked any of those three books, I do recommend this book to you. I think that you'll really appreciate the characters written in this novel. Overall, this is a very slow read. Um, I personally docked a star from it just because I do enjoy character-driven novels, but I also really enjoy plot-driven, and I really like a good balance, and the plot in this story was so slow moving. Um, not that I disliked it, but it just wasn't quite as entertaining as I like my novels typically. Like I thought Where the Crawdads Sing had much more of a faster pace to it than this book does. Um, so that's why I docked the star, but that by no means means that I disliked the plot. Um, it just means it wasn't perfect for me. So overall, this is a very slow but rich read. It packs a really powerful punch, and I think it kind of will stick with you after you put it down. You'll reflect and think about kind of what the author was trying to say um, with some of his characters and some of his um, particular elements that he decided to put in there. So overall, I really, really enjoyed this book. And before I finished this review, I did mark a page in this book with one of my favorite quotes that I've seen in a very long time from any novel. So I want to read that to you right now. Everything's hard work, Buck. You don't wrap your thinking around that. Life will kill you for sure. Me? I love this land. The work. Never was a churchgoer. God all penned up under a roof? I don't think so. Ask me, God's right here. In the dirt, the rain, the sky, the trees, the apples, the stars in the cottonwoods. And you and me too. It's all connected and it's all God. Sure, this is hard work, but it's good work because it's a part of what connects us to this land, Buck. This beautiful, tender land. So I love that quote. I think it really embodies what this book is trying to say and the writing style. And you will find that the writing really does pack a punch. So if you're ready for a very character driven, beautifully written novel, then I highly recommend this Tenderland. And if you decide to read it, definitely let me know. And if you've read it before, leave a comment down below letting me know what you thought of this book. So that was my review of This Tenderland. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it helps you decide whether or not you want to pick it up. 
If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I release new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and sometimes even more if I have reviews to release. So thank you so much for watching, happy reading, and until next time, bye! Mm -hmm.